Now, as promised in sport, the Rugby League World Cup gets underway tomorrow with the England men's team taking on Samoa in Newcastle. It's set to be the biggest and most inclusive Rugby League World Cup in history with the men's, women's and wheelchair World Cups all coming together and being played under one tournament. Well, our sports correspondent Adam Wilde is in Newcastle this morning for us. Adam. Yeah, good morning. A real festival feel here in Newcastle on the quayside. We've got the young people practicing behind us. We've got a zip wire being built over the river there. We've got a fan village being set up. A really excitement beginning to grow. And look, this is what it's all about here. We have here the Wheelchair World Cup, the Men's World Cup, and the Women's World Cup as well, as you say. These competitions beginning in the next couple of weeks. The men's, though, begins tomorrow with England against Samoa. Just a stone's throw away at St James's Park. I'm delighted to say we joined by Ellery Hanley, rugby league legend. Um, all the excitement, all the build-up. It's going to be a big occasion tomorrow, but actually a very difficult game for England to start with. There's no question about it. It's going to be very difficult. England know that themselves as well. And uh, they'd have prepared for that. They'd have un understanding their training schedules and uh, through the classroom schedules as well um, in actual monitoring um, the opposition, making sure that they're doing the video analysis of all the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition. And um, I wouldn't expect uh, anything else but an England win. I can say that standing from the outside simply because um, as all the nation as well, we expect England to go all the way to the final. But they're going to have to play well. Make no mistake about it. It's not as if it's um, as we played um, a few months ago and they played the, the All-Stars team and everything where they've spurned a number of opportunities on the football paddock for that 80 minutes. They have to be clinical in everything that they do. And what it does, it actually prepares them for later on down the competition in terms of making sure that when they get to the semi-finals that they're right on point in all the facets of the game. And it's important we don't just talk about England because all the home nations are there and also some really competitive teams from the Pacific Islands, Australia, New Zealand, of course. It, it does feel, in terms of a tournament, it does feel competitive. It feels really exciting, doesn't it? It feels like a big global event just about to start here in Newcastle. Oh, there's no question about it. One of the, I, I'll go back to just turn the page a little bit. But I think one of the great executive decisions was not to host the World Cup last year through the pandemic. We've got all the teams on board now. They're all competitive and everybody's looking forward to it. It's going to be absolutely a spectacular um, event, World Cup and everything and I think it's going to be the closest World Cup we've had in decades and decades and um, the teams are quite evenly balanced. And when I say the teams are quite evenly balanced, I'm talking about the New Zealand, the Australian teams, the England team, uh, the Samoans. I think I'm expecting big things from them and um, I'm expecting them to challenge each other in every single department and facet of the game. Ellery, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, it is, as Ellery was saying there, a really exciting prospect. 61 games across the three tournaments, 21 venues across England. It all begins tomorrow, England against Samoa at St James's Park. Adam, for now, thank you. Thank you.